Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. How y'all doing? It's Kaiser, and I am glad to see all of you out there today. Thank you all again so much for checking out my channel. I know this has definitely kind of uh, been a this has been a faster news day than than most, and I'm just trying to play catch up at this point. But uh, yeah, so the latest going on there is that uh, there has been some big dust up with uh, regard to Indiana Jones 5 coming back into the if, into the uh, entertainment sphere yet again. Well, as we all know, say Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy is n allegedly not seeking a renewal of the or or, <laughs> or extension of her contract. Of course, um you know, this also comes on the heels of her uh, listing her <laughs> $18.5 million Malibu house up for sale. Yeah, from a lot of what we've been hearing, I say it, things are not going well for her. Uh, apparently, she is now allegedly locked out of the Lucasfilm offices and basically is on uh, the equivalent of, <laughs> again, massive grain of salt here, but allegedly is on uh, administrative leave for the remaining 18 months of her contract that she's going to be writing out now at this point. So what's the what's going on recently in regards to uh, Kathleen Kennedy and Lucasfilm and all the other stuff? Well, it seems that Lucasfilm and particularly Kathleen Kennedy and her ineptitude for leadership has gotten Disney and Lucasfilm into yet another stupidly frivolous and ridiculously stupid lawsuit. But I'm not saying stupid lawsuit on behalf of what they're being, like why they're being sued. I'm saying they made some really dumb decisions and now they're getting sued for their dumb decisions. And honestly, I can't wait to watch this one because honestly, oh, if you'll pardon the pun, this, uh, this company is going to, that's coming it, it, pardon the pun that's coming here but if you it, it, this company is about to take lucasfilm to the cleaners and i love it so the courtesy of the hollywood reporter lucasfilm sued in trademark dispute over backpack in indiana jones and the dial of destiny a clothing company intent says the studio used its signature backpacks in the sequel without permission without permission and then pass them off as a competitor's product. Ah. Ah. Okay, there is there is some serious levels of dumbassery in life. This is this is like way above like almost parody levels of stupid. So you literally got a company that makes signature like get backpacks and outdoor gear and clo outdoor clothing and you use their products in the movie and then you use them without their permission, which is bad because you didn't sign any kind of uh, copyright agreement for that product to be used. And then you went and passed them off as some other competitor's product. Oh, it gets worse, folks. It gets a lot worse. In a suit filed on Wednesday in California federal court, Frost River accused Lucasfilm of using its products in Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny without permission and then passing off its signature backpack as a competitor's product in a deceptive marketing campaign. Quote, this lawsuit corners two corporate juggernauts, Filson and Lucasfilm, exploiting the hard work and intellectual property of Frost River, a small American company, states that, as it states the complaint. Yeah. In the movie, Indiana Jones wears a backpack or a bag with a knapsack design featuring a drawstring top main compartment with a flap cover. Uh, Frost River says Lucasfilm never obtained its permission to use the product. Instead, the studio removed identifying marks on the bag and in violation of the federal trademark law. Oopsie. Let me try and make that a little bit bigger so everybody else can read. Yeah. As part of its marketing for the movie, Lucasfilm authorized Filson to run a co-branded campaign to promote the movie and the clothing company's products. According to the suit, 
Quote, Lucasfilm and Filson produced a 60-second commercial prominently featuring video clips from the Indiana Jones 5 film intertwined with video clips of actors using Filson's own products. Unquote, writes Dave McRae, a lawyer of Frost River in the complaint. Quote, shockingly, one of the intertwined video clips was one of Indiana Jones 5 featuring Frost River's geologist pack. Unquote. Whoopsie daisy. <laughs> I can't believe that this is happening. I can't believe that this is real life right now. Oh my god. Again, I have I have to read this again. Shockingly, one of the intertwined video clips. You know, they're, they're at the advertisement, the 60 second advertisement that they made for Indiana Jones 5's partnership with Filson outdoor brand. Shockingly, one of the intertwined video clips was from Indiana Jones 5 featuring Frost Rivers geologist. <laughs> and they also they went they removed the branding again. They removed the branding from the Frost River product in violation of federal trademark law yeah and never actually got pre <laughs> to use their product <laughs> i just oh my god this is so ridiculously stupid like how dumb do you have to be like okay seriously i was I was old enough, and I guys could say young enough, whatever, smart enough that I learned a long time ago, even whenever I was doing like high school level, like, you know, stuff like mo making little backyard movies and things that you had to remove the branding from stuff because God forbid somebody sees that and then you have like some bump, somebody breathing down your neck about it. I mean, in the backyard movie days. Probably wasn't going to happen, but at the same time, it's kind of one of those things now where you think about it, it's like, eh, yeah, you know. The complaint claims a violation of the Lanham Act, a federal trademark law, Lucasfilm and Filson did not immediately respond to requests for comment. Gee, I can't imagine why. Yeah, again, this is just re insane. Thankfully, uh, this uh, article here does actually have a included copy of the complaint. So I did bring that up. I'm not going to go through the entire complaint. But yeah, it actually does show some of the, the logos and stuff for, you know, Frost River and shows the pack in question. Even shows like some little bits of it, like from the movie or the you know production stuff where they actually show the pack. Show the Filson products, actually, as I show the Frost River products on Indy and Helena in the Filson website as part of their advertisement. And yeah, whoopsie daisy, that's uh, not so good. So yeah, there is a full legal write up on this. And it's this could not come at a worse time because Disney and Lucasfilm are already under fire for another uh lawsuit that was ta that started taking place earlier this year and back filed back in March Lucasfilm sued for egregious axing of producer Karen McCarthy from Star Wars series The Acolyte yeah the very long and short of that one here is pretty ridiculous so Karen McCarthy has taken uh, the Kathleen Kennedy-run Disney division to court over being pink-slipped from the Leslie Headland-created series The Acolyte last year after just a few weeks of work. McCarthy was being actively courted by Apple at the same time to run their eventual Colin Farrell starring P.I. series Sugar. Say, deciding to throw her in her lot with the potential long-term commitment to Lucasfilm and the Acolyte in early April 2022, 
<laughs> McCarthy found herself in an employment Death Star and no cash to show of it at the sudden end, it seems. So essentially what happened that they don't really get into here uh, is that they hired Karen McCarthy to direct and do work for uh, the Acolyte. And then they bring her in. She works on the set for a couple of weeks, and then they fired her after she passed up another job to work on this one. They just fired her without really any uh, any rhyme or reason, just saying, ah, well, you know, we, we thought about it and just kind of like, you know, decided we didn't want to work with you. So she sued Disney and the lawsuit is still ongoing and yeah there is a link where if you want to read it the full uh, complaint but yeah basically saying that she lost out on millions of dollars and gainful employment because she had to pass up another job with apple and their uh you know pi series with uh, colin farrell that uh, sugar whatnot series they she passed up on that one thinking that the Acolyte and a partnership with Lucasfilm was going to pay out better for her at the time. Oh, somebody hasn't been paying attention to the news lately, but yeah, that's kind of the situation that uh, they find themselves in. Well, I mean, it can't really... Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's not hard to understand why she probably got axed from the Acolyte, not because of anything she did, but uh, as we've kind of heard, allegedly, uh, and this is actually just a quick little thumbnail from doom cox video highly recommend get a chance go watch that as well get the full story on that so allegedly uh disney spent 312 million dollars on the acolyte and it they've basically allegedly got enough to string together enough footage to string together maybe a demo reel and this thing has been in production for years they've spent tons of money on it and nothing has come of it so again, I highly recommend go check out this video. Doomcock is amazing. He gives a, has a lot of really cool insider information. Uh, highly recommend that there. And yeah, Disney's floundering because they just released the Ahsoka series. And oh, guess what? Tonight, we're going to talk about it. Yes, I'm already aware of it. There's a big twist. That has really insulted the fan base and insulted uh, anybody who actually remembers the prequels from Star Wars. Yeah. This one contains a major twist. Well, I wouldn't say a major twist, but basically it's becoming a trope at this point. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but I'll tell you, it is insulting and annoying and just utterly just makes you want to scream as you could possibly imagine and oh yeah disney and lucasfilm y'all are paying the price for a lot of really stupid mistakes kathleen kennedy has run this franchise into the ground and i don't know what there i really don't know if there's anything at this point worth saving in star wars at this point they are going to if they have any hope of salvaging this franchise and any other franchise attached to lucasfilm their best option right now shelve everything shelve all their products shelve everything that they have for at least 10 years and then try and reboot everything forget that this all happened shove it to the back retcon it out of existence whatever you got to do veil of the force and just make sure that this no longer exists because oh god this era of star wars has been the worst it's okay because disney's paying for it and they're gonna keep paying for it as long as they keep bankrolling it you have paid the price for your lack of vision <laughs> Anyway, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Please definitely go down there. Hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. I am really, really excited. Tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern, I am going to be doing a live show, Real Talk Live. It is going to be our ninth episode, and I'm going to be doing a review of, guess what, the first two episodes of Ahsoka, and we're going to be talking about it. 
I'm going to be going over it in detail as much as I can. We're going to talk a lot about this series and just what they are doing. Hopefully, if I can line up some guests, I'll be see if we can uh, make that happen. But anyway, it is a it is going to be a shit show. I'm going to go into this one, try and be as open minded as I can. But I I have a very a very distinct feeling that this is going to be a uh, this is going to be one for the books. All right. So anyway, folks, again, thank you. Like, subscribe, share the video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will talk to you on the next video. Peace. <laughs>